Hi everybody and welcome back to Karin Soul Kids and yet another lovely care collab video. And please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe if you end up finding this video useful for you in any way. <laughs> well, today's collab is going to be about my Ketleia, also formerly known as Lelia Purpurada. My variety is called Moon. I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I grow it on my windowsill today. And the other participating channels this time are as many as eight different channels. So it's going to be a lot for you to see. It is Attainable Green, Fernanda Nascimento Orchids and Succulents, Mary G Orchids, Matt by Nature LAL. 3L, <laughs> Ninja's Orchids, Patricia's Orchids, Plants and Other Things, and last but not least, Tropical Plants Finland. And when you watch my video, tune in to their channels. I'm going to link to the channels and as well as the videos in the description box below. And this particular Ketlea Purpurada is native to Brazil and nowadays it's uh, widely spread in Brazil so yeah it grows <laughs> almost everywhere and <laughs> this one is said to be a medium-sized Ketlea but it still grows about 100 centimeters that's one meter tall so well by my opinion this one is really not a, a medium-sized Cattleya, but, 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 we all have different preferences. It's got bifoliate leaves and it blooms in late spring. And as for my preparada, I got it at a society meeting uh, 2016 as a large specimen in a very small clay pot. <laughs> And when I took a closer look at the tag, it said Moon. Lelia Purpurada Moon, it said. And I got curious and I wanted to know what this moon stood for. And <laughs> it was a guy called Henry George Moon. An English landscape and botanical painter known for his beautiful orchid paintings. I was zoom in his signature on this preparata painting here, so you can see for yourself. So I'm very fortunate to be the owner of such a lovely variety. It's uh, located in the uh, sunniest position in my whole apartment, the sunniest spot that I could ever give to him. And as you can see, the leaves has got a nice light green foliage, nice light green color to the leaves, which indicates that is receiving sufficient amount of light. She gets LED light from approximately 9 o'clock in the morning until 8 o'clock in the evening. He receives natural daylight from about 5 o'clock in the morning until 12 o'clock at noon. So she receives quite a lot of sun. <laughs> And when the weather is warm enough in June uh, and the night time temperature doesn't go below 13 degrees Celsius, it's time to bring him out again for summer vacation. <laughs> and from the middle of June, approximately, until the late August, when the nights are getting too cold for it, I bring it in again. I gradually adapts it to the strong sunlight. I have a little shield there and it gets morning sun, a lot of morning sun, but uh, its leaves aren't so easily burnt. So the adjustment period doesn't have to be so extended for it. It can take quite a lot of sunlight since it already sits in uh, really really sunny position so it's uh, quite used to it as for watering when it comes to its 
my watering routine on this orchid. Yeah, it's uh, similar to all the rest of my Kitley orchids. I'm not making a big fuss with this orchid either. So, <laughs> well, for now, um, I'm using this uh, orchid fertilizer, quite strong one. And I also add a little bit of CalMag to add some calcium to it as well, uh, every once in a while. And I also use this uh, <laughs> uh, black water powder <laughs> that I use for my aquariums to uh, create black water with a lot of humic acids and such to simulate my previous fertilizer that was called um, Orchid Focus Grow and Orchid Focus bloom yeah but i thought they were quite um light fertilizers i wanted a humic acid so now i got it a black powder <laughs> so i'm gonna add just a little bit to every waterings i think that one would do the job just as well as the orchid focus fertilizers did during winter time i dip watered this guy um yeah, in a bucket for about one hour every other week that's about that's about all it gets during winter time and sometimes I fertilize it lightly and sometimes I don't so but comes warmer weather and summertime I dip water every other week and go over it with my sprayer once a week and just flush it a bit where it sits on my windowsill. <laughs> I let it dry out quite well before I water it again. But this one needs a lot of water, so I wouldn't want it to dry out. It will easily get wrinkled leaves as well as dehydrated pseudobulbs. So that's not a good thing to not giving it water for any length of time, okay? And during the summertime, when it's sitting outside on my balcony, it's getting uh, regular rainwater, pure rainwater, every once in a while, depending on how much it rains. But it really loves its watering, <laughs> a lot of watering during the summertime. So its pseudobulbs often plumps up a whole lot, and the leaves are plump and nice and shiny. So it likes its humidity and pure rainwater, I think, soft water. So during the summertime, I usually go over it with my sprayer on my balcony and let the excess water just drip down on my neighbor's balcony. And I kept this guy outside every summer since I got it, where it can receive some slight difference in night time temperatures as well as daytime temperatures and as well as receiving a little bit more humidity to its leaves and some lovely rainwater and regarding humidity and temperature yeah, it's now getting 24.6 degrees celsius and only 48 percent humidity so the humidity level is uh yeah slowly dropping as uh, spring approaches as well as warmer weather. Today we had a really really hot day for being April. We had about 17 degrees outside and that means lower humidity inside. So it would be great for it to have a summer vacation soon in June and get some more humidity. And a purpurada really needs to become a real large specimen before it's able to bloom for you. For me it took about two and a half years for it to bloom for the first time and it bloomed at the end of April with four lovely really fragrant flowers from this large size cane. I guess the largest one of them all. And the blooms 
were quite short-lived, about 19 days on each blooming. And the blooms was a little bit, uh, not deformed, but shall we say that the sepals were a little bit bent backwards. So I would have wanted them to open up more properly for the blooms to look even better. You can see it on the pictures here. And I thought the flowers should be larger than they really were. Measured about 13 centimeters across the uh, petals, I think. 13 or 15. No larger than that. No. And they had a lovely scent. Uh, not a striking scent, but um, yeah, a decent scent. Enough scent <laughs> to be pleasant. And yeah, and the year after that, it produced a little bit, a um, little bit smaller cane, and it bloomed from this guy as well. But this time with only three flowers at the same period of time, a couple of weeks earlier. And the flowers lasted for, yeah, you guessed it, 19 days. <laughs> but this time, the flowers came out perfect. And the sepals were going a little bit more upright. And unfortunately, I don't have a picture of the second blooming since I had a computer crash. And all of my pictures somehow disappeared out in the outer space. So, well, not all of them, but a great deal, unfortunately. But I've got a picture of his buds, at least. So you can see that it had three buds <laughs> and not four. Ten centimeter tall sheath. The tallest sheath I ever seen on a Cattleya orchid. <laughs> So, <laughs> it's fun. But this time, this year, my lovely Purpurada Moon will not bloom for me. It needs a lot of moisture, but it still likes its roots to be somewhat cosy and dry out quite rapidly. Does this one seem to be a small sized pot to you? No, it's not. But... It was the smallest one, but still the next size up that I could get hold of. And as you can see, the rhizome is down there to the side. There's, <laughs> there's not much room left, aren't there? And here is the new growth. Looks like a lovely new growth, a strong new growth at least, coming out from... The pseudobulb that should have bloomed for us right now. Woohoo! Anybody in there? No, nothing. Because this is a weak growth and this plant is recovering from my attempt to divide it into two pieces. So, now it's two orchids in this pot. And where the division, where the cut has been, this part is trying, is still trying to produce this really weak growth. Well, well, well. And its newer part, the stronger part, the most number of roots, is finally now producing this little better growth, a little more strong growth. So this growth is going to grow on through summertime, through winter time, and next year this one will bloom for us. So, it had a severe setback, and its pseudobulbs are, well, they're getting plumper now, but they really was quite slim not long ago, so it's on its way of recovering. And it's now sitting in plain bark. These pieces of large bark is only for looks. <laughs> so, it's really... Small size or oh, one to two centimeter bark pumice and a little bit of charcoal down there into the pot. And I think a lot of styrofoam to the bottom so it won't be too soggy. So now it's doing better and it's a huge plant as you can see. You know what? I think I almost covered it all. Don't you think? But if you've got any questions or any suggestions or anything you would like to ask me about, talk to me about, please write in the comment section below. Don't hesitate, alright? I love to get comments in the comment sections. So I guess now you have a lot of other watching to do because you're going to tune in to eight other
different orchid channels and watch their Catalina Purpurada videos and see what their Purpuradas are up to. <laughs> so, that's why I kept my video a little bit shorter than usual. <laughs> Until I see you next time, have a lovely day and take care. Bye bye.